if you want to pet Rose, oh Rose is one God. of our singers. Rose is glad to sing when you pick her this, up. This is happy. This is a happy noise. Oh my god. Oh my god. So what we'll do, we'll go out and see their habitat outside. Mm -hmm. um, obviously they're very loud and then mm -hmm. we can we can talk up there. Okay, let's go. Excellent, excellent. Awesome. So so this is their exhibit, huh? Yes, yes. So um, this this habitat here we brought out all the bells and whistles for this. So um, as you can see, there's a mesh over top. Yeah. Then one of the more important things about that mesh is that little blue penguins are considered the most nocturnal species of penguin. They're not officially a nocturnal animal, but they're the most nocturnal. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to be able to have them have, them have the ability to be out at night. That's so awesome. weather contingent, they have access to inside and outside all time and they're safe. That's awesome. So, Talk to me a little bit about uh, the high school that actually that's on grounds of yeah. the zoo. Um, so there's a school here that's here at the Cincinnati Zoo where teenagers, juniors and seniors in high school literally come to school at the Cincinnati Zoo wow. every single day. And part of your day, you're working in different areas of the zoo. Now I went through that program. So every day I came to school, I couldn't believe I was going to school at a zoo. And I got to come here and learn about animals. I literally got hired the summer after my junior year as a seasonal keeper mm -hmm. in the bird department mm -hmm. where I, I am working now. Mm -hmm. And worked there as a temp keeper, seasonal keeper for a few years and eventually got a full-time job here. But that high school is what led to that. Right. You know, I, you know, I always loved animals as a kid. I would, and I'd catch, you know, uh, make little terrariums out of jars my grandmother would save back for me. And mostly insects. That's where I really started because that's the most accessible animal. You, you know, don't seem like an insect In a guy. city. Well, in a city, right. there's not a lot of stuff around, right. but you can find all kinds of insects. They're everywhere. So I would make a little habitat to learn about insects. At some point in my life, we moved to a more rural area, a semi-rural area, and I got to play in creeks and catch frogs and turtles and fishing and all that stuff. Eventually, uh, uh, one of my science teachers mentioned the Zoo Academy. It's called Zoo Academy? Yeah, it's called the Zoo Academy. Back when I was there, it was called the Zoo School, and then it turned into the Zoo Academy, so now it's known as And, and it still Academy. exists. Exactly. Been since 1974. How old do you have to be to enroll? Uh, just a junior. Uh, um, you can enroll as a sophomore in high school. Okay, so I'm too old. <laughs> okay. Point, point, point taken. Here's the thing, Ricky. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I've always enjoyed Cincinnati Zoo, and it's always... <laughs> People ask me, and I, I, I'm, I, I'm not going to say this. I'm going to say this, but I don't want to say this, really, because I know some dudes might be upset about this. But Cincinnati Zoo was always one of my, if not my personal favorite. Some of the, people always ask me what, what your favorite zoos are, and I'm like, Cincinnati's up there pretty high. It might be number one. You can step it up some. But no, nah, anyways, <laughs> we'll cut that out. <laughs> so what do the animals mean to you? You know, you have a natural connection with the animals, right? right? So there's a relationship that... I think a lot of humans, some of us that care for animals, that you build with caring for another living thing, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. um, and you realize that unlike some jobs, there's a requirement of dedication that you have to have to be in this field because there are living things that are depending on you for their uh, best care, for their comfort, for giving them enrichment, for, um, their training, their mental stimulation, and we are re responsible to learn how to do that the best way possible. But you know, there's um, a team of people that are dependent on you, and there's animals that, that are dependent on you. Mm -hmm. And we all work together to give them the best care, and then at the end of the day, that turns into helping other people care about the animals that we care about. But the first thing is I have to demonstrate dedication to those animals and then other people will see that value. So I can say all kinds of things, but am I demonstrating that dedication? Mm -hmm. And so people notice it. People notice when you seem happy about what you're doing or if you're excited about it. Even on your bad days, you, you're excited and you still find the energy to kind of work hard at doing what you do. And I find it fun. It's like they say, you know, you find something you love, you never work a day in your right. life. It, it, I mean, yeah, let, those of us in zookeeping. Literally, no. <laughs> I mean, well, there, we are, there that. are those days that we're just like, oh my God, why am I here? But one of my big things is animal training. Yeah. And I believe if I have to go, okay, from when I first started training dogs and training penguins 
what would I say moving forward has been the most kind of impactful kind of concept mm -hmm. is that animal training basically, it's like a lifestyle. And it's way more than just animal training because every time you interact, these are one of the core values of animal training. Every time you interact with an animal, you're training them in some way. Mm -hmm. So you should be proactive about your interactions. Mm -hmm. Because for example, one, one thing I oftentimes talk about, you ever go into like a store and you hold the door for someone and they don't say thank you? <laughs> yes. That, that's training me to not hold the door for open for anybody Everyone. else. Everyone. Now, the people or who don't. Or slam shut in their face. <laughs> exactly. Right? Like, oh, exactly. oh, I held the door. No, what I do is I grab them back and throw them back outside <laughs> and close the door and keep walking. Now, what I always point out is that the people who don't say thank you, they're probably not thinking that they just punished you right. for doing something good. Mm -hmm. But once you're aware that just saying a simple thank you encourages that person to do it more, right. but it's not benign. Like yeah. they probably think it's benign to just walk through the door. Mm -hmm. One of the core ideas of animal training is that you should recognize that it's never that benign. You should actively be going, hey, thank you. And now you just added some positivity to that person's life and a lot of other things. But if you didn't say thank you, you actually punished them to some degree because wow. You are pretty typical of like most of us, when someone doesn't think, say thank you, it's a bit of a punisher. Mm -hmm. So that concept transfers to when I'm interacting with animals or other people, it's just thinking about, am I trying to make the most positive impact as I can? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't require that much. It's a simple, hey, thank you, nice shirt. Hey, I like those Jordans, by the way. It's that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't have to say things I don't actually feel, but, <laughs> I can say right. the things I really find, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. And if I don't have anything positive to say, I don't have to say anything, but anything. I can just be pleasant. Right. Hey, how's it going? A head nod. Acknowledging yeah. another human. Those are simple little ways that you're adding positivity to the world, but that transfers to when I enter an animal space, I have to be thinking, what impact am I having on that animal? Mm -hmm. And so how can I proactively interact with that animal in the best way? but it's everything. And so once you understand it and you've practiced it enough, it becomes automatic like anything else. So. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be its own separate video. You can find it on Amazon for $20, $29.99 uh, coming soon. Half the proceeds go to Ricky. Half the proceeds go to Ricky. <laughs> um, so uh, just since, since we're, you know, we're out here, there's no penguins out here, it's, it's quiet, I can actually hear my thoughts. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about, about you and, you know, what keeps you coming to work every day? So, uh, to be quite honest, I, I just truly believe in the mission of zoos, right? Mm -hmm. So I think we do a lot of good. We teach a lot of people about animals. Uh, we inspire people to care about animals. Uh, when I was a kid, um, I think you and I have talked about this, where, you know, there's a concept of, when you get up over the ladder, you're supposed to reach back over and help the next person over. Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, um, I saw all the Cincinnati Zoo All-Stars on TV. There used to be a TV program called Zoo, Zoo, Zoo. Mm -hmm. And I idolized those guys. I said, mean, I'm a kid and you know, different departments, they went around just like what you're doing now. Yeah. And they highlighted little things and facts about animals. And as a kid, as Cincinnati born and raised, it seemed like impossible that I would be able to one day be working at the Cincinnati Zoo. And, you know, I ended up going to the high school here and then eventually got my job here. But I just always believed in um, doing the best we could to teach people about the natural world and animals. I've always, and I'm fascinated by animals. You know, all animals are super interesting to me. And so um, it's just, I, I have fun every day. I enjoy what we do. I believe in the mission of what we do. And it's, it's interesting, it's super cool. So yeah. yeah, that's part of my thing. So a, a lot of a lot of my uh, my story, I feel like, kind of blends in with yours a lot, which is kind of how you know we connected when, when we first met. It was kind of funny. We met at um, in person at uh, at in a Zookeeper Conference. Yes. And yes. Um, we 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 were immediately connected. Yes. We immediately clicked, and it was such a connection that some people there came up to us and was like. <laughs> Hey, so are you guys like related or, or brothers? Or I mean, I'm like, no, I just met him today, like, exactly. literally an hour ago, and right. it, like literally an hour ago, and that, they, they literally were asking this. I was like, no, I know. no, it's just, I know. but it was just such a immediate connection. Yes, and yes. I, 
I think uh, some people out there would love to hear, you know, your story. And so I appreciate you sharing just a little bit yeah, of it, gladly do um, it and, and uh, do it. showing the off the penguins. And again, he loves his job so much that he's here on his day off. He came in <laughs> to come talk to me about about how much he loves the hippo or hippos. This is, I guess, the Cincinnati Zoo. Immediately, hippo was on my head. So in my head, we're talking about penguins today. Okay, no hippos. Yes. I'm done. Well, Ricky, thank you hey, so yeah, much. No, I gotta get the hug. Definitely, definitely. Thank you so much, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm sure I'll be back some point. Absolutely, All absolutely. Right. Anytime. Yeah. <laughs>